Hi everyone. So we are on day two of a uh, lesson. It's in a different book. So um, it is uh, the county fair uh, lesson three. Well, not our lesson three, but you know what I mean. And this is not in your book. So please don't look for it because it's not there. The handout for this, uh, the PDF of this version of this lesson is in uh, the previous days for lesson ones. So look there. We are going to be on that last page, but you know, you don't really need it. You just need to make sure you got some paper, pencil, calculator, things like that. Um, and so if you take a look at here, we're going to be doing four problems using substitution to solve them. We're going to do this algebraically. So instead of graphing them, we're going to just solve this algebraically. If you take a look at here, uh, 2x plus 3y is equal to 34. If you notice, you also we also have another equation uh, that has to be true. And we know that y is equal to 5x. So we want to know at what point, so these are two lines, at what point do they intersect? Because that intersection is the point where it is a it's a solution for both lines. It's the only point that's a solution for both lines. So that's what we're going to do. And if you notice right here, uh, remember we said that we're going to be using substitution, which means that um, we're going to have to substitute something. So if you see uh, this y, the y equals 5x. It's already solved for y, so we're going to use this one. And we're going to plug in, uh, instead of this uh, y in the green, we're going to plug in 5x, all right? Because we know that y is equal to 5x. They're the same thing. So we took out the y, the green y, and we're going to put in the purple 5x. So if you notice here, there's no more green y, right? It should not be there, because if it's still there, we did not correctly substitute anything in. We just added stuff in and not substitute. Remember, substitution means you take it out and you put the other thing in. All right, so we took out the green y and we put in the uh, purple 5x. And now, and now it's just a one equation with one variable. We can solve these, okay, we've done these before. So I notice here that I'm gonna just simplify the left-hand side. So three times 5x is 15x. And then we have uh, two uh, like terms here on the left-hand side. So we're gonna combine like terms and it's 2x plus 15x, which is 17x, okay? And we're just simplifying that part until we get to, okay, here's our one variable. Just got to get rid of that 17. So we're just going to divide both sides by 17. Done. All right. And so x is equal to 2. So now a lot of times we would be like, if it was last, you know, we'd be like, okay, we're done. Move on to the next problem. But we're not because remember, we have two variables now, right? So not only do we need to find x, we need to find y. Okay. Don't ask why. <laughs> and then so we're going to go in here and you could actually plug in this 2 for either of these equations. You could plug it in for the top equation or the bottom equation. What I would do is pick the one that looks the easiest. So I'd be like, oh, yeah, that looks, uh, this lower, the purple equation looks much easier. So I just plugged it into that purple equation. So um, we plug in the two in for X, again, substituting. You still see an X there, you did not substitute it right. Um, so five times two, which is 10. So our equation we're saying is two, 10. Um, and uh, we had graph, we checked this by graphing, but actually you can check this by, uh, what is it called? Uh, algebraically, you don't actually need to graph it. So what we would do is since we use the purple graph to find the, uh, the y, the remaining uh, variable, we're gonna use the green one, the green equation to check it. So two, and instead of x, we're gonna plug in what we know x to be now. And same thing with the y. I'm gonna put a question mark above it. So this is my check. But do you have to do this every single time? No, but it's uh, on a test I would just so that you can, you know, for sure that you did it right. Um, so we plug in the two for X and the 10 for Y, right? And then we're gonna just simplify the left-hand side. So it's gonna be two times two, which is four, plus three times 10, which is 30. Is that equal to 34? Yeah, th 30 times four is 34. So yes, 34 is equal to 34, happy days. There we checked it. Okay, so that's how you algebraically check. It. Um, just make sure you put it in the equation that you worked on before. That's a easier way or a better way to check your work. Okay. So now we're going to go on to B. If you take a look at B, it's a little bit different. Uh, if you know they're both equal to y, and when they're both equal to y, because you have like slope intercept form for both of them, if they're both equal to y, we could just be like, well, then the other side has to be equal to each other, right? So we know that 4x plus two has to equal three X minus two. So we, in this case, we just decided to put that three X minus two, substitute in for that Y, just like that, right? So we get three X minus two is equal to 
4x minus or 4x plus 2. And then from here, we're just going to do a little bit of algebra. I right? just figure out the, the x. And if you notice here, there's nothing to simplify on either side of the equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the x on one side. So either we could either get the x's on the left or the right. It does not matter. Um, here, we decided to bring it to the left because uh, if we subtract 3x on both sides, it keeps everything still positive. I'm talking about the x's. So 3x minus 3x is going to be 0. That's what we want. So that's why we canceled it out. It's just 0. 4x minus 3x is x. And you can say 1x, but you know, uh, the pro tip way is to just to put x there because we know that x means 1x. So um, there we go. Because uh, how many x's do you have? Only one. All right, so there we go. And then, so we got negative two left is equal to x plus two. And we just need to get rid of that two plus two. So we just subtract two on both sides and we get x equal to negative four. So far so good. And so now again, we're gonna plug this into either of the two equations. Uh, we decided to use the top one. Uh, you could have used the bottom one, doesn't matter. Again, I would, what I would do right now is I would just pause it, try it yourself. All right, and then so I'm just plugging this in. Let me just use a little bit of colors here. So this x is going to go right here, and this for that particular x right there. All right, and 4 times negative 4 is negative 16 plus 2, and we're just simplifying the right-hand side, and we get y is equal to negative 14. So our answer is negative 4, negative 14. All right, and then again, we're going to check that algebraically. Since we found the y to with the top equation, we're going to just check it with the bottom equation. So, oops, instead of y. So here's our check right here. So we're using the bottom equation. Instead of y, we're putting in negative 14 is equal to question mark, right? Three times x. You know that x is negative 4. Well, that's what we're trying to check to see if that's correct. So this should work. So if we put it in, if we found the right point, um, this should equal each other. And if it doesn't, because any other point won't give us an equal sign here. So negative 14 is equal to question mark three times negative four, which is negative 12 minus two. And sure enough, negative 14 is equal to negative 14 because negative 12 minus two is negative 14. All right, so good. That's our check right there. All right, so now we've done two problems. And if you notice this third problem, C, uh, looks a little bit different. And next time we meet, we'll be talking about a different way to solve for equations because there is actually another way. Um, so this way it's called substitution. Next time we come, it'll be a different one. Uh, but either way you want it, if you want to continue to stick with substitution, you can do it. It's good to know, mo know both because uh, sometimes the other way is more efficient than this way. Um, for because you know sometimes we need to get y by itself or x by itself and in both of these cases uh, they're both solving for y but technically you could solve for x right it's just a little then we'd have to deal with fractions because you have to divide both sides by two in this case right so um, and so what we did here so this is all copied down over here I drew the arrow so we decided that we're going to uh, figure out this y we're going to solve for this y so we can plug it in just like how we did for a and b. All right, um, so we just subtract negative two, uh, subtract two x on both sides, and we get negative y is equal to uh, negative two x plus five. Why did I put the negative two first? No particular reason. I just I'm usually used to writing it in slope-intercept form, but we don't have to do that here. Um, we're just wanting to solve for y. And again, we have this negative, so you would multiply by negative one on both sides. All right, and so y is equal to negative one times negative two x is two x. Negative one times five is negative five. So here we solved it for y. Yay. All right, and then, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this into the blue equation. So instead of the blue y, we're gonna plug in two, the green two x minus five. So that's what we did right here on the right. And then we're, again, we're gonna just simplify things. So we're gonna distribute this to, so three x plus two times two x, which is four x two times negative five, which is negative 10, or minus 10, same idea, right? And it equals four. And then if you notice right here, we have two x's on the left that are on the same side of the equation. Well, there's a lot of people here, not, not a lot here, but uh, there was a lot of people who would actually do this 
please don't do this. This is the bad way to do it because this doesn't make any sense mathematically. Notice we're subtracting 3x on only one side. The equal sign is right here. Uh, and this is, we're doing, we're subtracting 3x on the same side twice. So that doesn't, okay, what happens on the right-hand side? We have to do, we want to keep it equal because now it's no longer like, it's super really not no longer equal, right? Because we subtracted 3x twice on the same side. That's not even. It's like your mom taking away three bucks from you and then another three bucks from you. And you and your brother had the same amount in the first place, right? That's not fair, <laughs> right? So you got to make sure that it's one on each side. Um, so this is a no-go. The way we would combine like terms is just how we normally would combine like terms. Maybe this will happen. All right, so it's just 3x plus 4x equals 3x plus 4x. 7x's. Right, so 7x minus 10 is equal to 4. And then now it's just our two-step equations. Um, and if you don't know how to do these yet, you, you need to go and practice that. <laughs> go to a previous, previous unit, okay? So um, if you look at this, we're going to subtract 10. So we're going to add 10 to both sides. And then we got 7x is equal to 14. And then got to get rid of that 7. So divide both sides by 7. Then x is equal to 2. Okay, and remember we're not done yet because we still have not figured out the y. So we found the two, and now we're gonna plug it into either one of these equations. I normally like to use uh, the original equations. If you want to use the one where you solve for y, you can, okay, since it's already solved for y. Over here on the right, uh, we, um, what is it called? We, uh, I, we use the original equation. Um, if you want to use the other one, you will get the same answer. You better, because if you don't, then there's an issue. So we know that instead of x, we're going to put in 2 and minus 5. So 4 is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4 minus 5. So y is equal to negative 1. So if you notice right here, we did the same thing. We solved for a y, and we still got y is equal to negative 1. See? Same thing. So here's our point where it goes 2, negative 1. And again, we're going to try and solve this, uh, try to check this algebraically. So we're going to check this for the other equation that we did not use. So we use the green one for to solve for the y, the last variable. We're going to use the blue. So let me pull up blue. Here's the blue equation. So here's 3x plus 2y. Notice I'm just putting parentheses because, you know, we have to replace those numbers there, replace those with numbers there. So 3 times 2 plus 2 times negative 1. All right, and then we're just going to simplify the left. Oh, don't forget our question mark. I'll just write down that. That's our check. And this is going to be 6 plus 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 is equal to 4. Is that true? And we're like 6 plus negative 2. Yep, that's 4. 4 is equal to 4. Excellent. Okay, so this is our answer. Good. We are on our last problem. Are you ready for that? <laughs> All right. So if you take a look at this, again, we have, they're both in standard form or general form, uh, either way, uh, either name is good. Um, and the, is all of these variables have like coefficients in front of them. And the only one that doesn't is this top y right here. So I'm like, well, we're gonna solve for this y because that's a pretty easy one to solve for, x, for, solve for y. All right, so here we're just gonna subtract three x on both sides and we get y is equal to eight minus three x. And if you have not ever tried this already by yourself, just try it by yourself. <laughs> Right, so if you want to press pause, go ahead and do that. All right, so if you take a look at this here, so 8 minus 3x, right, is what you should get. And we're going to plug this 8 minus 3x in for the y. So this is going to be 6x plus 2 times. And instead of y, we're plugging in 8 minus 3x is equal to 10. And then so we're going to just distribute this. So it's going to be 6x because we haven't used that yet, plus 2 times 8, which is 16, minus 2 times 3x, which is 6x, is equal to 10, all right? And then we're just going to simplify it on the left-hand side, and if you like, well, 6x minus 6x, 1x, a lot of people say 1x because they really find an aversion to really canceling them out. So if, just think about it this way. If you have 6x's and you take away those 6x's, how many x's do you have left? zero x's, right? And how many x's is zero x's? Zero. So um, yeah, that's why you no longer see a zero, here, uh, an x here. That's, it cancels out. So all we have left is 16 is equal to 10. 
And is 16 equal to 10? Not last I checked, right? So yeah, that's not equal. So whenever we have an instance where we cancel out the x's, what we've done this before is um, what's going to happen is that we actually we there's literally no x that's going to make this work, right? Because what happens? The x's cancel out, and both sides are now no longer equal to each other, right? There is no solution that's going to work, uh, no x's that's going to work. So here we just call it no solution. We don't have to go any further. No solution. And if you notice right here, if it were to be equal to each other, then we would be like, oh, that's infinite solutions. So um, let me just pause this really quick and give you the graphical version of that, okay? All right, so if you notice here, um, I put in the equations in Desmos. And um, so it's the blue and the green right here for the D. And uh, yeah, you, could, you see for no solution, this is exactly what happens. If you have parallel lines, when do they meet? Because remember, the solutions when the, there's, they share a point that is the same for both of them. So at some point, they should intersect. But when you have parallel lines, do they ever intersect? No. So yeah, so this is what they would look like. No solutions always look something like this, where there are going to be some kind of parallel line you know, in some way or form, right? We had talked about this in a different lesson. Remember, uh, I believe it was, was it Marcus and Philip, right? They never met. Um, they both started at different starting points. Uh, they like remember they deposited money. Uh, one was forty dollars, the other one was twenty five dollars, and both of them uh, deposited in ten dollars every week. Were they ever going to at the same week have the same balance? It's not possible, right? Because one of them deposited in forty and to begin with, the other one twenty five. They're always going to be a little bit behind, right? So it's the same idea here. Um, so if you take a look at, so we're going to just check uh, these other uh, points graphically. So if you check the next one, we had said that C was, uh, what did we say C was? Oh, yes, negative two, uh, two negative one, right? Two negative one right here. So I'm gonna put these guys in. As you see right here, two negative one, do you see? They intersect right there. We're just where we said we would, that it would, right? So that's where two, uh, and then, um, Let's check our B. We're going to kind of go backwards here. So our B, we said that it was going to be 210. So let's try this out. So there would be these two right here. The ones where we set them, set them equal to each other. Ooh, maybe it's not 210. Oh, sorry. It was over here. Wrong one. Negative 4, negative 14. So here, if we just scoot this down, right here's negative 4 for the X. And right here, see, they cross here at negative 4, negative 14. <laughs> but this is how we check it instead of uh, having to graph it, because some of them could be a little bit, you know, different. And then here, our la uh, the first one that we started with, we said the intersection was going to be at 210. And so let's go up here. And sure enough, oh, there's 210, just like that. All right. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Helpful for you. Um, if you want to practice them, I would highly recommend that you do that. Be comfortable with substitution, because it's going to keep on coming up again and again not just in this unit, but in future, um, future math classes, okay? I'll see you later, bye.